Well, I think we're back. We're back. Hey, a few of you have reached out going, when are you doing another live? And we went, oh, that's right, we've been offline. Mm. And then we come up with some really cool topics to talk about. And to get it started, I'm going to have a rant. I think um, I've been noticing a lot of people that are being uh, inconsiderate with their time they have on this planet. Mm. I think people are wasting moments that they just don't have to give away and just letting life slip them by. We've noticed so much of this happen and, I, and I'd ask everyone that's out there to ask yourself this question. Are you wasting your life? Do you get up and just go to work and come home and do nothing else? Do you sit in front of your TV and do nothing else? What what value do you have on TV, your life? TV, computer, phone. Any of those things, whatever it happens to be. Not that that's a bad thing, but my question is, is firstly, are you happy with your life? If you're not, do something about it. Are you enjoying your life and making the most of it? If you're not, do something about it. Are you enjoying the small things? There's so much of, we've just been noticing so many little things and what we've been talking about a lot lately is the idea of participating and participating fully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't take much to do that. Like I just posted only five minutes ago um, something that we did tonight and you guys would have seen Chanel, I haven't seen, oh, good, you haven't seen it oh. <laughs> um, and so like what we noticed even before we did EJ and Bear's um, intimate relating couples relating an intimacy workshop we were already kind of um, in that space of enjoying the simple things in life we already kind of treated each other to, to multiple things and to kind of put it into context Clint and I have been hard workers most of our life and I know we've said this before like I used to run I, used to, I mean, you would typically work two to three jobs a week and I would work Monday to Sunday and um, and I got off on the fact that I was such a hard worker. I thought, look at me being an achieved human, realizing that all I was trying to do was actually go back to my, my six-year-old self and prove to my daddy that I was good enough, right? This is ultimately at the, the bare bones of each and every individual adult. Your truth is that your mother or your father is the predicament that you're in, right? You're trying to, in some way, shape or form, prove your mother or your father right or wrong or do better than them. Or, or even just show to society. Sometimes it's just to prove to society and that whole... Ego. Uh, yeah, <laughs> your, your own ego. But most of us are looking at success, and we come back to this once again, this whole success or the way we live our life, determined by other people's expectations. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter whether it's your parents, your family, your brother, your sister, your wife, your dog, whatever it happens to be. The government. You, yeah, ugh, yeah. We're determining our own success from the way that everyone else sees it. Mm. My question is, is that working for you? Is it, does it feel great? Um, does it serve you in the way that you want it to? Like at the end of the day, you, you achieve the things that you think the world thinks you should achieve. And does that have a lasting effect? Does it, does it feel good? Yeah, do, but not only, I mean, it's easy to get feel good. You can buy temporary feel good. That's very, very easy to buy temporary feel good. My question is, is this something that fills your freaking heart? Is it something, all of these things you work for, buying, buying the new PlayStation, buying the new flat screen TV, does it actually add value to your life? Mm. And I know that the world sees it and they go, oh, you know, we've got this great TV, we've got the great, whatever it happens to be, all the bullshit. And that's... All it is is bullshit. I don't mean to offend anyone, but that's all it is because I guarantee you're not taking them with you. Mm -hmm. So we do all these simple, small things. I mean, we do... Um, we do extravagant things, yes, granted. We do extravagant where we can because we see that there is so much in life to be explored, to be played with. And I think that's the ultimate game is remembering to play with life. Yeah. You know, you're here for more than living. Life is not just to live, to eat, sleep, work and repeat. That is the construct that mm. dictatorship has created to keep the humans at bay and to keep them in line. Whereas you are created as wonderful individuals that are meant to be here for catastrophic momentum in all directions and yet we forgot that part and we're here to play you know that's why children come out and they start playing and they start exploring um i'll even just quickly divert we, <laughs> we saw someone as we do we saw someone walking today and i was like whoa like look at that man and he was like walking really rigid and and we had some some naive chuckles about that but then we realized wow like we know of humans who have lost the ability to walk and some of the most extraordinary stories were some that had fully learned to walk again completely and how they did that was to go back and study babies, right? Because babies 
are the beginnings the beginning like we don't we don't become a baby and start walking rigid and figure out how to rigidly walk we go back to rolling and crawling and wiggling and using our body in its whole complete capacity and as adults we forget the blessing of our children we forget mm. the blessing of our youth um, and we forget that over time the construct of society rips pulls and, and deteriorates that pure innocence and that pure joy and that pure humanness of of our adolescent of our adolescent version of ourselves and so it was that reminder that wow like so many adults have an accident which is usually the universe's way of going slow down stop change directions or do something differently and we jump back in and we try and adult again we try and human we try and walk again and we forget to come back to the the innocent basics of the human form of a child mm -hmm. and learn from that space again and so i think it's that humans get soaked away with the, the construct of society as it is and we forget to frequently come back into our childlike essence and, and really see what we can construct from that space I'm boiling. Yeah, there's a couple of thoughts I have there. One of the things that I love about watching children <sighs> is um, the curiosity they have. A child mm. looks at the world as if it's something amazing, as if there's something to learn they look at it with this sense of awe like every single thing. You watch a baby their eyes are going and the smiles over the littlest, tiniest things. And the world kills that in us. Mm. But not just the world, our friends, our family, the people around us, they say things like grow up, you know, get, you've got to do this, you've got to achieve, you've got to do this and this and this. Now it's all bullshit. We're here to live in and we put so much value on our financial success that you stop living and you stop participating. And the reason we're talking about this is there's so many of us that start, they get their job, they, and, and you're excited about it, no doubt, in the, in the early part. And then you what start... What do you want to be when you grow up, they say, yeah. in school? Yeah. And that's where they start from day one. Your parents start talking about it, which, I mean, there is a balance there. But my point is, is so much of this loses its value because you lose your curiosity. Mm -hmm. You lose your curiosity on all of it. You stop growing, you stop building, you stop... Because it is essentially a means to an end. And most of it is. You're, you're doing this job, whatever it happens to be, to be able to get to this financial place. You're not doing this job to be able to feel amazing. That's a side effect that, that you're feeling that the money brings in. Mm. You, you're, you Which would, is temporary. Yeah. And I find that for most people, they say they love their job. And my question would be, if you had $5 million in the bank, what would you do? Mm. And very, very few people say that they would be in their job. In their job. Oh, I'd be in the Bahamas. I'd be doing this. I'd be bloody... Whatever it happens to be. Most people aren't going to be doing their job. Mm, mm. So I find that really interesting. And that's what I say is, are you actually participating? Now, when you see someone that's actually participating in every aspect of their life, not just in their job, and this isn't just about the job, it's participating in life. Everything. Participating because, full out. Like yeah. so many people think that they, they shouldn't go all in because this fear of failure or this fear of stuffing it up or this fear of looking a fool and it's like, you have one life and one opportunity. And I know I'm going to sound like Eminem right now, but like, uh, whatever it is. And so it's like, we think that we can't go full out because somehow we're going to run out or we're going to hit the end. But the truth is, you never fail. You never hit the end. You never fall off the earth. You always find a new direction or you find a diversion into the next thing and a diversion into the next thing. And we forget that life is a constant phase of evolution. Everything in our life, even if it's wonderment, even if it's participation, it's knowing that it will constantly evolve as you evolve. Nothing is ever wrong. Nothing is ever the end. Everything is always just the next chapter, right? Mm -hmm. So it's remembering that if we forget that our role in life is to participate fully and that comes back to presence, that comes back to balance, that comes back to everything that we always speak about, but being able to participate fully in everything and fully feel it, fully express it, fully laugh over it, fully cry over it, whatever it is that you're called to in that moment in time, fall so madly in love with that expression of that point in time and feel it so, so wholeheartedly and completely because in that dynamic, your soul, your being, your biology cannot do anything but expand. Mm -hmm. Whether it be positivity or negativity, that soul experience in that moment is only ever going to expand your consciousness, your life force, your life energy. Well, and your willingness, sorry, and your willingness to do the next thing, to try the next thing, to be the next thing. Well, what, what I'm hearing from you again there is every single thing is about being present in that moment, regardless of what moment it is. Mm -hmm. The idea 
that one moment is better than the next and the next moment is better than this one mm. is what keeps us in this state of lack. And it keeps us unhappy. If mm. you, for some reason, think that somehow tomorrow is going to be better than today, you're fooling yourself. And I heard this the other day, and I've heard it a thousand times. People say, oh, well, I'm just unlucky. Luck is also a, a construct because you needed all of today to realize that you were less fortunate than you were yesterday. It's just a reference point. It's not that you are lucky or unlucky, but people say this because it's a reference point because I was doing better than five minutes ago than I am now. Now, that doesn't mean that this moment's worse than the last. It means that your mind is tricking you into thinking it's worse mm. because everything just is. Mm. Now, this when I say just is, this is a lot to grasp mm -hmm. because Very you're not going to see... Well, you're not going to see an angry tree. You don't see a pissed off wave. You don't see... <laughs> You don't see the dirt getting pissed off. You don't see anything in nature that we're connected to that has any emotion to anything. It just is. Mm. We're no different, but this mind of ours tricks us into Emotions thinking and ego. Into thinking that the last moment was better than this one or the next moment could be worse. That's not true. If we can settle down and fully embrace these moments, come back to the present, enjoy what you have, make the most of the small things and stop selling yourself that... You have to be happy to have all of these things. Some of our best moments, I said to Shana, we went out for, well, she took me out for, for a picnic up on um, Miami Hill. Yeah, so it was beautiful up there. This is something that is available to all of us. This is, these are things, we've been doing a lot of this lately, going for a walk on the beach at night, maybe going for a swim in the beach at night, thanks, Timmy. Um, <laughs> whatever it happens to be, these things are actually available to you. Mm. This is where the joy is. We actually came home this afternoon and both of us were feeling a little off. And I was like, let's go park the car, literally jump on the push bikes and go for a bike ride. And we literally rode from here up to the, um, down south and back again. We only moved for about 30 minutes. And that 30 minutes was just enough to transmute our energy, our emotions, our body, our digestion, to re-energize, to detoxify everything. And it's those small windows. You don't have to do things for ages, but just grasping at each and every moment and going, mm. what can I do right now that's going to best serve me? Sure, we can come up here and, and, and have some sugar or have something that might make us, or a coffee that might make us feel energized, but it's synthetic and it's only momentary. Mm. Whereas things like exercise, beach, uh, plants, walking. It doesn't matter what it is. Workouts. The, the, the reason these things are more valuable, doesn't matter what it is, going outside, touching on these things, because you start connecting with your senses, which helps make you more grateful. present. More present, more grateful, all of those things along the lines. But what we're, we're seeing so much of is people have a lot of things available to them and they don't use them because it's easier not to. It, they're lazy not to. We are, we've all been, I've been there, I've not participated and there's so much of that. I know that for myself, there's a lot of my life that I didn't participate in because the hope was that the next better, and the next moment was going to be better. Mm. Now, coming back to the Get thing with ba babies and that, yeah, we've all done it, all of us. The time to change is now, though. What we've noticed, and we see this a lot with parents, is they have these children because they want to spend time in this person's life. They want to add value to both their lives. Now, what ends up happening is you get stuck on, you've got to have the job, you've got to have the thing, you've got to buy the baby, the whatever it is, you've got to do all of these things, the financial success, the worldly success, and they don't spend any freaking time with their kids. Mm. I'd ask everyone to just ask where your values actually lie. Mm. Every day, not just once a year, not just every six months. Ask yourself what matters to you every day. If you do this every day, you can say, you know, look, there's so many parents. I was one of them. I, didn't, I spent time with my kids, but I, I, there was a lot of things that I know that I could have done better. I could have been more present with them. I could have been, put the freaking phone down while I'm playing with them, while I'm kicking the ball, doing whatever it happens to be. And sometimes... Remembering that the adult stuff, the bills, the work, the emails, that stuff will still be there in an hour's time. Mm -hmm. Your children's memories, your children's emotions, and your children's presence is in the now. Children don't or shouldn't sit there and think about the next minute or the next minute. They, they are fully present as much as possible in this moment. And if they're not, you have some questions to ask yourself. And it's understanding that, like, we both spoke a bit about tonight about our own parents, and it's remembering, like, 
be present, be, be, be right there with your children. Because like I had a father who chose his music and I fucking love my father. I've no, I now as an adult can look, there was so much gratitude over my childhood and I wouldn't change a thing between my mother and father. Just know that before I speak. But my father chose his music and spent a lot of time away. And when he was there, he was then omnipresent. He was participating in everything, so much so that me as a kid, I was like, who are you and why are you involved in so much of everything and why do you want to know everything and why do you want to teach me everything right now? And it was all very well focused. But then I had a mother who would be in the next room having a cigarette and a drink and I would come in and ask if I could spend 10 minutes with her, but I wanted her not to smoke for 10 minutes. And that would trigger her and she would tell me to get out as a kid. And, you know, all I wanted was 10 minutes that I could sit there and be with my mum. But she wasn't participating and was not present. I would ask, us kids would ask mum all the time to come and do things with us. And look, my mum is amazing. I have no qualm with her now. But it's interesting to notice these things and understand how they shaped who we are. Now, I'm going to say this and I'm going to loop back around and and, and twist a few things. But it's, it's knowing that, you know, my mother was there and all I ever wanted was time. And she never was present, yet she was always there. My mum was always in the other room and yet she was never participating and she was never present. My father was never present, but then when he was there, he was participating so much that I couldn't actually open up to it. Nor could I trust it because the the child mind was that if I open up to this and I trust this connection from this person that is meant to be my father, if I like it, the trend has been that once I start to get in and participate with my father and his wholesomeness, it would go, it would end, and then I would mourn. So as a child, I would shut down because I knew that if I really adapted to this and opened myself to it, it would go, which has led to multitudes of other things in my life. But what I wanted to say in that was, how many of these parents have children and think, I'm going to be different to my parents. I'm going to be different to society. I'm going to be different to my sister and how she parents, blah, blah, blah. Is that so many of us come in and have this, this belief And then we let society rob us of that beautiful, innocent, wonderful magic that was our belief of being a parent. And we allow ourselves that we we allow ourselves to fall into the quicksand of needing to um, someone drinking me. I will ring them back. Um, We fall into this quicksand of having to do the life. Do the bills, do the things, our expectations of what our quality of life needs to be. But we also forget when we're a child, when something doesn't work, you might chuck a tantrum, but quite often you'll figure it out. And as a child, you're quite creative. And as adults, we forget to be really creative. I think that's been the genius part of our life these days is we do have, we have managed to financially set ourselves up very well by being very smart about how we do things but not seeing things for their downfall many people in the communities would go this is wrong and that's not working and this isn't working and that's not flowing and that's not working how they said it would and falling for the the negative rather than what we tend to do and this is what i urge you all to do is look at life and go well if that's not working out the way it was first envisioned or told it would what can i do to enable that to work out that way What can I do? How can I work this? How can I make this work for me, for us, to create more for people? Now, we have a great community in the crypto world and the world of what we do, which we are about to launch a shite load of things and how we've diversified things. Not financial planners. All we ever do is do the thing, see how it works, understand it, and then share it for those who actually want to give a shit about changing things for themselves. And that's the magic, is the fact that we sit there with our heart open and we are open to life and, and exploring it. What, one of my questions that I've got there is when you're not conscious, when you're not present, when you're not participating, what's going on in your mind? Noise. Noise? Yeah. Yeah. Vacancy as well. Like it's Vacancy. Um, you're living in the in future and the past. World. You're living yeah. in these spaces where you're never actually truly here. You're always fretting about the stuff, the noise and the chaos. Yeah. And stuff that potentially could or would never happen, right? 100%. It's the so, fear. So there's a few things that I want to note on that. Um, what I've noticed in a lot of people's lives, when, when their kid asks them, oh, can you do this with me? And as we come back to the kids, when your kid says, can you come and play Barbies with me? I know I was guilty of it. I'd go and do it. 
but I've been my own little freaking world. I wasn't actually participating. Mm. Not all the time, and there was a lot of those times. Sometimes the kids are happy that you're just there. They don't really care. They just want you there. Mm. However, if you can step back and become more present, the value of what you're doing becomes better. What you're doing, you enjoy a whole lot more. You can watch the expressions on the face of the children. You can watch these things and see it for what it really is. Now, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah. And what, I, what I'm also going to note on this is so many people have their kids ask them to do the things and they just don't do it. Sometimes, like, kids don't actually really need that much and sometimes I was asked, oh, can you come and play this with me? And there's this big part of me, I don't want to do it. And that's why you're sort of vacant out because you go, oh, I don't, I'm not in the mood to play Barbies. I don't know how, I don't know what you, you it's in your imagination, da, 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 whatever else it happens to be. But sometimes also just saying yes to that can be a fucking big change in your life and in your children's life. To be able to stop, step away from the noise, participate, just be a part of it, be there, try it, have a go. You might like playing Barbies, I don't know. Well, the thing <laughs> I've noticed with most adults is that when children come along and ask the adult to play, it's usually when the parent or the adult is so disconnected and so torn about something, quite often in the middle of a big decision, not knowing what to do, they've got some, some stuff going on. And what the magic is, is that quite often the parent will go and actually play with the child, step away from their mindset of fretting and, and the overwhelm and whatnot. And they'll have this sudden awareness, this sudden hot moment or this sudden, mo uh, sudden moment of clarity where the eureka will come in and they'll go, oh, I now know what I need to do. Because you stepped away, you weren't there trying to fight the stream and disconnect it. You'll actually step into the stream of flow and happiness and enjoyment. And in that stream, things, your whole energy, your whole ether, everything around you becomes happier, lighter and more in flow and clearer. Well, it's simple in, in that respect because stillness speaks. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you slow down, when you become more calm, when you have a rest, you get the better answers. You, you can clear your mind. How many times you get that you wake up in the middle of the night and you go, oh, that makes sense because your mind is at its stillest point. You're in the shower. You, you go, that makes sense. Click, click, click. That's how it goes. Driving we, in a car. We were having a chat the other day, rang Shana up and I'm like, I've got an idea. Da, 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 we'll do this, this, and this. And I'm like, just from that space of complete stillness, mm -hmm. stopped, calm, done the thing, whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. I feel like too many of us try and fit too much in our lives, which makes everything be done at like 7%. Mm -hmm. If you can do one or two things a day, doesn't matter what it is, and put 100% into it, the quality of what you're doing works. Mm -hmm. Life's not about having quantity. It really is not, does not matter. If I could have the time that I've had already and live it fully, that's better than living three lifetimes. I've had a hell of a life already. I'm very happy with my life. However, if I could have the years that I've had and fully live them, participate in everything, that's a that's hundred lifetimes, more than most people will ever live. And I sort of feel like this happens so much. Most people slip on by. Why do people worry about dying? Because they haven't friggin' fully lived. Most people try and work. I get into this thing where you leave school, you work, you create your financial freedom. And then I you live, live to work. I live to work, yeah. not work to live. And yet, you don't know if tomorrow is guaranteed. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow at all. There's not one point, there's no way in the world that you can be guaranteed that tomorrow is going to happen. Well, so my if you're question not participating on participating or enjoying. My question on that is how many of you are actually scared of death? How many people that watch this or talk or do you know that are actually worried about dying? Because I sure as shit aren't. If I die right now, that's okay. Can't control it anyway. It's guaranteed. Even more guaranteed than taxes. We can avoid taxes if we want. It is absolutely guaranteed. Get comfortable with it and start living your life properly. If you hate what you do, fix it. If you don't like the life you're in, change it. Mm. If you don't like your partner, get the hell out. Yeah. doesn't matter what if you're, you're in. 100% awake, connected, and, and like participating in your relationship stealing oxygen you're stealing and this is another thing that we're both so passionate about because we've done it we've, yeah. we've both been in relationships where we weren't fully participating and you know the only regret i have not anything sooner is is a is, big part of it is not anything sooner it's because it's... you may not be fully in and i know we're diverting we do this in so every one of our chats <laughs> but if you're not 
fully participating in your relationship. You're not wasting just your time. You're Scaling wasting the their time. Stuff. And that, that is balderdash. That's I, robbery and that's theft. That is the worst thing you can do as a human. I've done I it. believe. I've done it because there's that whole point of being comfortable, mm. being in a spot you think going, you can't oh, have this, more. it's not that bad or it is or it is, whatever it happens but to be. But you're not participating. I'm and not, then you're not yeah. fully participating. That's the main point. One hundred percent. And and I was in a relationship and for an outsider looking in, and even for me, it was better than any relationship that I knew. Better than better than anyone that I knew. And I, I used to think to myself, what 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 makes this any different for me? Now, I wasn't participating and I was essentially stealing that person's life and I am greatly sorry for that because it wasn't fair. It was not fair. They'd been better off years ago. Stop it. Change it. Now, there's, there's this massive point when it comes to all of that of changing lives and this and that because we talked about this the other night. If you could speak to your younger self, what would the, be the advice you'd give? And I thought about this for a moment because essentially I would say things like make sure that you... Um, don't settle or that you do everything fully. Now that being said, life's about learning lessons and you're going to continually get served them same damn lessons until you learn them. Mm. That's what I've found in my life. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what's happened to me. The point, what I'm getting at here is I wouldn't actually change a damn thing and I wouldn't go back and the only advice that I would say to myself is do your best to be more present mm. because life's going to happen anyway. You've got the opportunity whether you participate and let things happen for you or you let things happen to you mm. what happens there is if you let things happen for you the world is your oyster you make the most of everything yes there's still going to be situations and things change and ups and downs and indifference but if you let things happen to you you're a damn victim and you're going to make yourself a victim and you're going to you've heard the friends you've all got the friends and maybe you are the friend that says mm. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. I lost my job today because you wouldn't believe this and that happened. There was damn the shit car, I've had. Someone's car ran into me. This happened, yeah. that happened. They're always a victim of a circumstance constantly. And it's, and it's ultimately the reminder that everything is your choice. Every, if every you get in a thing. car crash, guess what? You chose to be running late or you chose to get in your car at that time. You chose to turn down that street. You chose to be doing that speed. Everything is a part of your choices conglomerated everything. together to create that event. We had a perfect example of of everything being connected today. Coming back from the chiropractor, said, oh, we'll go through this way to go to um, the hairdresser on the way back. Now, obviously, we get lost in a time vortex, but we haven't eaten, so we'll swing by a place on the way back, rushing, of course. I pulled in, didn't ever pay the parking meter, and got booked. Mm. When we got to the hairdresser, of course, there was too many people there, and we didn't get the thing done at the hairdresser either. That was a we connected lot of events. We could say, oh, fuck, if we hadn't done this, done that, the other, if it's we just sort of went, no, happens. that's too much today, we'd just go home because we were going to have food at home anyway. We thought, we'll go there, we'll do the thing, da da da, because we thought it'd be too late to get lunch. Now, we could be stuck as a victim here and say, I can't believe this happened to me, but it's just another bloody fine for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but it's just another part of the thing. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Danny. Yes, Believe Danny, it or not, I, I know I never get booked. I know I never get it's parking fines because, you know, it's it just the world happens for me, obviously. But I feel like, you know, I'm so just having people that pay that Even we still do way too much. Um, but the other thing was that we spoke about on this topic was that remembering that everything happens for the right reason, right? Like, even though all these things happening, they might not be good or they might not be great, we can look back at our entire life and realize that everything happened so well for us. Everything happened for us. And you can't change it. So when we say participate fully in something and, and be all in with everything, and what we've just said the last 20 minutes, is remembering that even though unfortunate things happen to you, you must marvel in the magic of what happened because the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, everything in between, it's all happening for you. And I wouldn't go back and change the three people that molested me as a child. I wouldn't go back and change the shitty ass relationships and the abusive relationships and the attacks that I had. I wouldn't change any of it because it created me to be the human I am today and to actually be here in this moment. And we have both spoken so many times about the kind of human that we were before we met. If we had have met any time sooner, there is no way in hell this relationship would have worked. No. There is absolutely no way because neither the, of us would have been ready for this. Neither of us would have had the appreciation, the awarenesses, the willingness. Well, the point with that as well, when we, when we talk about that, I had to learn, for me, I'll speak for myself, 
I had to learn the lessons that I needed to because what happened is I kept getting served the same damn lessons mm. any earlier, any later, any of those things. You just don't know what might happen. You might have been hours later. You might not have seen each other, whatever else. Everything is so connected. And people think, say things, everything happens because it's the way it's supposed to. Everything happens because it damn well has to. There is no other option for things to happen the way they do. These are so intrinsically connected. And I've talked about this so many times because that is, you know, the idea of speeding limits changing. I think it's all nonsense because the idea for this, for any accident, it's not an accident, it's an incident. For any single thing to happen, billions of things have to be connected. Your parents had to have sex at the same time as these other people's did to be in a car accident. Otherwise, they would have left one minute later, 30 seconds, 10 seconds later. And that time difference changes it. Wouldn't matter if I'm doing 200 kilometers an hour. If I'd left five minutes later, you will not be in that same place at the same time. The other thing to remember on that topic is our Earth, our planet, is the only one that has billions of perfect perfect chemical explosions, compounds and reactions all happening simultaneously to create human life and the life of a living. There is no other world or planet that they know of in existence that has those same. There are some that may have certain elements, but not one well, planet. Well, they're not telling us. <laughs> or not one planet, supposedly, from what we've been told, has the same billions of reactions and chemical compounds, blah, 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 all the things happening at once to create. We are such a minuscule minority of, of, of events. So remembering that each and every moment in your life is magic, whether it's good, the bad, and the ugly. When a bad thing happens, it's up to you to sit there and go, man, that was shit. Okay, what am I going to change so that I can have different things happen now moving well, forward, right? I, th I think quite often we come back to things being good or bad. Now, essentially, that is just your mind deciding that it's good or bad. Because the way we see this, you could be doing it something with full intention. And I could, if, if I was doing something to Shana, she might find it really good. The same thing to someone else, their perspective could be completely different. Yeah, yeah. So it's you that decides whether it's good or bad. It's you that decides whether you're happy. It's you that make these decisions. Make better damn decisions. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Don't, don't let the world happen around you. Make it happen for you. And make that choice by participating, by being fully in the moment. And you'll find that you start being more present and, being, and, and participating harder. Mm. You're going to find that the world works better for you, partly because you're taking the time to let it do so, connecting better, and you're not rushing around. The minute you start slowing down and going, okay, you know what? I've tried to fit too much into my day today your life becomes better. We've talked about this so many times. For me that I've found when I rush and try and do things, doesn't matter what it is, I can use mechanical work or building work or any of those things as a reference point. I do a shithouse job. I'm not happy with it. I rush. I'm stressed. And you know what? I don't do it any faster. Mm. If I do it casually and go, you know what? If I get this out of the day, that'd be great. And I know where I'm going after it. And I just enjoy it. I watch the paint go on or I'm doing the job. It works. It happens faster. I enjoy it more. You've got more time to do the thing because you're not rushing around, fumbling, freaking around. And it's all in your head. This is all in your head. And what this is about is a state of mind. People talk about meditation and happiness. Happiness and meditation are so closely linked because they're a simple state of being. And the other thing is, is we're so addicted to distraction and pain. Sadly, the reason why meditation is so hard for humans to grasp quite frequently is because we're addicted to pain. We're motivated by pain. We're motivated by sacrifice. Mm. We're motivated by anger because we've been taught that that's the most productive way because it seems that in society's illusion of what success and productivity is, is that sitting still and having calm is actually not productive. Yeah. That going slow and going with flow and being in balance is not productive because you're not contributing like a happy little workaround to society's expectation of what evolution should look like. So therefore, link pieces together, society, dictation, and uh, our government, and our way yeah. of doing things are all built upon the construct of pain and growth 
by sacrifice rather than being present, being fully involved in being the human that you are and so much more. So if you it's, really start to look at the way the world is, you can actually see where the constructs have been built to burn out the humans because we are just ants and minions to those who are trying to create other forces and other things in the world. That's a very so deep conversation for another time, but I'll leave you with that thought. There's a couple of comments I'll make there and I find this very interesting because we have a lot of quick ones. <laughs> We have a look at the way the world does things. We get promoted to and sold to from the day we're born to be a part of the world. You're not a part of this society unless you're doing this, this, and this. You see it on your social media. You hear it here, there, and everywhere. Be you're, a leader. Be an yeah. influencer. I've, I've seen something recently. Elon Musk said, he said, your nine to fives to pay your bills, your, your, your six till elevens to make you rich. What fucking for? You're giving your life away. Now you see all of these similar things. You do this, you do that, you work your weekends, you work this and that. Again, for what? Now, someone said to me a long time ago when we were talking about um, the native people of Australia, the Aboriginal people, and they said, how would you feel when you start looking at how fucked we are as a white race? We've come here and said, you are all doing this wrong, you are all fucked, da da da. Here's a, we, we've got the biggest stick. Come in and conform to our idea. That's essential. I'm not taking responsibility. That's what happened a couple hundred years ago in a short form. My point was, now everyone's got to conform to this way of life. Whereas 200 years ago, what I'm guessing, how many years, what, what years things, they had a damn good life. They were enjoying themselves. They went hunting, they went fishing, they went swimming. They, lived, they didn't need for all of the things. They contributed. They contributed. They were a family. Yeah. They were connected. The values they were, were better. They were united. And what is wrong in the world right now? We don't have any of those things. So Think my point it. with all of that is when you look at who's participating and who's not, the are world we, changes. Is and the world really participating? Or are we all adding to the pain and the we're destruction? We're just disconnecting. And I, disconnecting. I feel like everyone is sold and thinks they're participating to, to become a greater good when realistically we're just disconnecting and, and we're stepping away from your families, you're stepping away from your friends. Too quickly do we notice our kids grow up and realise that we you it. didn't spend any time with them. Your life is gone and this is why people are uneasy on the deathbed is because they haven't damn well lived. Participate in what matters, question what your values are, live your damn life and realise that there is more to life than just living. Mm. I think I'm gonna, thank you. Peace out. <laughs> Perfect.